We're at Otama Beach on the northeast side of the Coromandel Peninsula on the North Island of New Zealand. It's a particularly beautiful part of the country. The beach is incredible, the views out to the islands are amazing, and behind the beach is regenerating New Zealand native forest. So the brief for this house was to create a dynamic home in a really special environment but the house needed to be a place for the clients to be able to meaningfully engage with the kind of restoration and rehabilitation of the landscape. There's 35 years of regenerating bush on the site, and so the house needed to be part of that rehabilitation project. So the site topography was really important in the way that we arranged all of the spaces in the house. We didn't really want to fight the shape of the land, so we thought we'd arrange the spaces to suit the way that the slope of the land kind of falls towards the east. And that meant that we could arrange spaces that were linked to each other and were differentiated by level rather than kind of vertical visual barriers, walls, whatnot. But because you can see beyond the space that you're sitting in, the rooms feel more expansive and there's more depth to the way that they feel. And the single form is really just relating to the single slope that exists underneath the building. So it references that, but also stays low enough that the line of the hill behind remains true. The site is a wild site and it's exposed to all the elements. It's dry in the summer with heavy rainfalls in spring and autumn. It can be windy if you get a wind directly coming in. It's a, it's a wild landscape. We had to think really hard about how to respond to all of the varying weather conditions because there are so many. We looked at the way that the northern facade kind of filters its edge so it's not always solid. There are spaces that are veranda-like, there are areas that are fully covered. You can get out of the rain but you can still be outside. There are moments where you want to kind of create a pocket, a little view out into the forest behind and to ventilate rooms that wouldn't normally get it, and to sort of frame special moments. So we have those dotted around the building as well. And then there are also really interior moments that are cosy and special to be in on an awful day when it's stormy outside. The house kind of has an intentional duality. There's these two main forces at play that come from the landscape condition. So there's the beach towards the north and there's the forest towards the south. So along the east-west axis, the sort of service areas are set towards the forest and the living spaces, the light-filled spaces, sit towards the north. When you enter, you cross that threshold from sort of the, the dark forest-like side and you get to experience those spaces again in that character when you use the service spaces behind. But on entry, that main threshold is expressed there's a circulation axis that runs east to west that you step into immediately and it's from this point that you can see how the house and its floor plate cascades down the slope. The main living area introduces you to the extraordinary view beyond but then each of the spaces aside give you a little taste of some other landscape moment that the orientation works towards. It's really important that it felt of the place that the materials and the colours were reflective of the natural environment to give a really soft and warm feeling to the interior. Timber's the predominant fabric that's been used both externally and internally. Flooring, joinery, the spine of the house is all timber. There's a red oxide wall which takes centre stage. There's actually the lime plaster incorporated some of the sand from the beach into the plaster, which was a really nice gesture. The waxed steel has a softness and a warmth to it. It's a wonderful house to entertain in. There's the outdoor fire which gets well used and the dining space that flows from that area. It's really special and people love, I think, sharing time in this house. It's, it's got a lovely spirit to it. I feel that it was very successful in the way that we were able to draw upon each other's knowledge through collaboration. It's 
difficult when you have such an extraordinary site because you only get one chance to make sure that you do it properly. No second chances. And I think because we followed that process, I feel like we, we got a good, meaningful result. Probably the thing I'm most proud of is not only the house, but the land. I like the idea that in two, three hundred years time, the trees that we're planting today will be majestic giants, and hopefully it'll be reforested with Puriri, Putakawa, and Kari, and that will endure, and the house will sit within that. <laughs>